Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Lena and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, political intrigue. I, I love this because I miss doing recommendations video on specific things. I did one on monsters. I did another one, which I don't remember which one I did, but someone so it's going to be somewhere here. But for some time I've been asked, like, give me more political intrigue books. I love political intrigue, but there's not like that many books about it. Hear me out. I got you. I got you. Today we're going to talk about books that mostly are books about political intrigue. Mostly. There are a couple of exceptions because I wanted something, some something different, you know, tastes, but let's just get started. So first here we have City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett. And hear me out. I wasn't the biggest fan of this book because for some reason when I read it, I didn't love it. I was just like, this is even, even boring for me, you know, like I love slow books, but I read it in a really bad time. Now that I think about it, retrospectively, I think that this book is actually super good. I do really want to reread this and then jump into the second one, which is City of Miracles? That was the third one. I don't remember. But in this one, we follow a kind of new ambassador for Call Her Something. She is also acting as a spy. So to uncover the mysterious death of her kind of uh, teacher, she really has to get deep into the politics of this city, which actually was uh, recently kind of invaded. So there's tons of things in this book. There's also a super weird magic system because uh, the gods have been slain, basically slain. So miracles are not working, magic is not working, and they're just... It's super weird, it's super weird. This is a really weird book. It's a really weird book, but I do prefer this one over Fandrasite because Fandrasite is more of a fan book and this is really heavy on these spy things, political things. Amazing. If you like political intrigue, you're going to really enjoy this one. I have talked about this one a lot, sorry, but still. Night Fox Gambit by Jim Halley. This is a science fiction book and it's really, really heavy on the politics, especially on the second book because we have a I think the, um, Mikoda's point of view didn't show up in this one. So he is a, he's kind of the leader of his own faction. So he has to deal with a lot. He even has different doubles. And especially in the second book, we learn a lot about how the hex circuit works. So there are a lot of things there. There's a good chunk of politi political intrigue in this book, but it's definitely more prominent on the second book. And that's why you I think you should read it. It's a really weird book. The political aspect of it is not like the main thing, but still super cool. And the third book is really prominent too. So then focus Gambit. We basically follow Captain Cherries. She starts with retrieving the thousand, the fortress of a thousand needles. And for that, she's going to use the help of General Jidao, who is this legendary commander who has never lost a battle in over 400 years. <laughs> Look at me, how I know that so well. <laughs> Check Nine Fox Gambit uh, carefully if you're new to science fiction because it's really weird. It's pretty complicated, but fantastic series. Then we have another soft one. So I'm going to include The Queen of the Chilling by Erica Johansson because, you know, ruling a kingdom has some political intrigue to it, you know, especially when you are 18 years old. It's hard. It's hard. So if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've read this series, but it's one of my favorite series of all time. Kelsey deals a lot with how to construct her kingdom. Well, basically to reconstruct it. So she has to deal a lot with uh, how she's going to treat uh, the most like poor people? How is she going to stop uh, other kingdoms from invading? How she's going to treat the neighboring kingdoms? How she's going to deal with the Red Queen threat? She has to deal with a lot. So that is a great point. If you just like more of a, of this job, like how the queen is going to deal with everything now that everything is just so, super messed up, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. Oh, and there's, there's a relationship here between the main character and the villain. Oh my god, it's just so good. But basically in this one we follow Kelsey and she's been kept away from the castle till she grew up and she could basically take the 
the crown and be queen. So when she turns 18, the guards are sent to retrieve her. She's attacked on the way, it takes a long time to get there. But when she gets to her kingdom, basically she discovers that her uncle has been ruling like shit. Terrible. Her people are being sold as slaves. A mess. So she has to basically reconstruct everything. It's super good. I would highly recommend this series. It's so underrated. It's so good. It's so good. Let me tell you about another hugely underrated series. City of Lies by Sam Hawk. This is a hard one because this is mostly political intrigue. Like, basically, this book is about a siege city. There's not much, much to do in the siege city, you know? other than figure out what the hell happened with the siege, why it happened, how everyone was able to just siege this. It's a mess. But we have two different POVs here, and the sister is basically mostly like the spy, the political intrigue of things. She's amazing. She's amazing. She's trying to figure out everything that happened, this conspiracy. It's so good. This book is so good. It's slow, you know, it's political intrigue, so it takes a while to get into and to finish, but the ending is so good. So good. So satisfying. Oh man. I cannot wait to read Hollow Empire because I pre order it, obviously. So I cannot wait. But please read City of Lies. We follow two siblings. The first one is basically the taster for the um for the heir to this kingdom, and he's also a master of poisons. And then we follow her sister, who is just like, you know, kind of a spy. She learns everything. She's just it's so good. Then everything happens, the city is under siege, their uncle and also the king are poisoned and we're trying to figure out what happened, how it happened and what is going to happen next. So good, so good, highly recommend this one. It's just extremely, extremely underrated, like super underrated. Then this is a bit of a stretch, you know, like I could not include this here, but I'm going to include it anyway. So this is Velocity Weapon by Megan Yuki. <laughs> I've talked about this book so much, holy shit. So there are again uh, two different POVs here, and again two siblings. So uh, Sanna wakes up uh, 200 years in the future and the war has ended, everyone is dead, and she's taken by this enemy ship which, and with an intelligent AI. So the story that I'm interested on for this video is her brothers, because he is kind of a... how can we call it? He's kind of a representative for saying something in this kind of war, so he has to deal with a lot and he's maneuvering through everything basically 200 years prior. So that part is really related to this series, to this series, <laughs> to this video. Some this part, not that much, but this one, it does. Yeah, I'm looking for reasons to recommend this book to you all the time, maybe. Maybe. Still, that's a weapon, amazing. <laughs> Now we're getting into the strong contestants here. So let me just tell you about The Emperor's Braid, Braids, I wish, The Emperor's Blades by Brian Stavely. Three siblings, <laughs> again, just siblings everywhere. One of them is going to be the heir to the kingdom. He's in the monastery. He's just, you know, trying to be a good ruler. Then we have the warrior. He's there to learn how to protect his brother and the kingdom. And then their sister, who is still at court, trying to get everything together after the death of their father, the emperor. So as you can probably tell, there's a lot going on in this book. And there's a good amount of political intrigue in this series, but especially in book two, because in book two, we follow the sister as kind of our main character. The three are just like really prominent throughout the whole series, but each book is kind of um, centered more around one of them. And the second one gives tons, 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 tons of chapters to the sister. And let me tell you, <laughs> she made me mad a little bit, <laughs> but still, this is a great series, by the way, also quite underrated. I haven't heard that many people talk about it, and it's actually super good. I still need to read the, um, the last part of the third book, The Emperor's Plates. Highly recommend this one. I haven't talked about this one a lot, but it's still really good. <laughs> then you will never see this coming. Never. <laughs> the Grace of Kings, I can leave. <laughs> oh my god, one of my best 
books of last year. I love this book so much. I love the Wolf Storms. I could have included both of them here, but I'm just too lazy to grab both. So I'm going just going to talk about the Grace of Kings. This is heavily, 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 heavily inspired by real history. And man, there were tons of political intrigue. <laughs> like, man, this is mostly all political intrigue. Almost everything. There's also a lot of court intrigue on the second book. A lot. Because everything is kind of established in the second book, so they are kind of fighting each other instead of the whole war on itself that happens here. So it's it's different but still in the same like way, you know. We follow Emperor Mapidure and his dream was to unify the seven realms. He does it, he creates an empire, but then he dies. And you know what? His dream of peace goes to shit because different realms are pro-empire and others are just like, you know what? We're going to rebel because we don't like this system. So we're going to follow two different characters. The first one is Kuni, who is the best. I will just say that to you. He's the best. He's everything. He's just really ambitious. So he's going to climb his way through the bottom of the chain to the top. And then we follow uh, Mata. He's been a train his whole life to uh, basically take down the empire because he uh, was the son of one of the previous kings of these seven realms. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this book. A lot. <laughs> there are different uh, sides. There are sides between the sides. It's just a lot, but it's so good. It's fucking amazing. I'd recommend this one. Try it. It's so good. Don't be afraid. It's not that long. It's just amazing. Then the last sci-fi on this list, A Memory Called Empire by Cardi Martin. So I love this book. You know that. But we basically follow an ambassador and she's sent to the capital of the Texacolon Empire because she is to supposed to just substitute her predecessor, basically. When she gets there, she discovers that her predecessor was killed. So she is trying to figure it out, to figure out what happened. This is a really weird book. <laughs> it's slow. It has a great talk about different cultures. Amazing. But as I told you, we follow an ambassador. So there's a lot of political intrigue here. I don't really want to tell you too much because I think that this book is better with you not knowing that much. You know, the basic premise is just good enough to jump into this book. There's a lot going on also. There's also going to be a sequel. I don't know if it's going to follow the same characters, but it's a desolation called Peace. And I think this one is going to be just the right one for you if you just like political intrigue, because it's just so difficult. Again, slow, you know, slow books. This list is a list of slow books, you know. This is amazing. This is amazing. I don't really want to tell you much because Go into this without knowing that much. If you want to know more, I will link here my friend's video. Angela from the Digital Science Alliance just did a review on this one. She really loves it too, so she has great taste. But yeah, I remember Call Empire, amazing, highly recommend. Please read this one. Mage's Blood by David Hare, book one in the Moon Type Quartet. I have a talk about this series quite a lot also because I'm a huge fan of it. I still need to finish it, but I think it's going to be one of my favorite series of all time. So I'm quite certain that it's going to be like amazing. I, I just love it so much. The times that I have talked about this book, I have talked that this series is basically uh, the trope of political intrigue reincarnated in a series. Because I've read the first two books and the and both of them are mostly people talking about what they are going to do. <laughs> with the war, with the other realms, with the with some of their own people. It's just a lot. But there's a lot of plotting and trying to get into the next stage in this book. So they're really slow. They're really, really slow, especially the first one. Not a lot happens here because every player, let's just call it that, every, every player in this game is just putting their pieces on place in this first book. And you can see that very, very clearly in the last part of the book because you're just like oh my god everything's going to just oh my god this is so crazy but till you get there there's a good chunk of pages that are mostly political intrigue we have mages trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do with the moon tie when the moon tie happens we have the bad guys planning everything we have the bodyguard being concerned about the bad guys we have a lot and everything comes together so nicely I think, like, 
<laughs> well, not nicely because many bad things happen, but everything is just like really well connected. So it's amazing. But in this one, we basically follow these uh, two continents. They are really, really different from one another. The world is actually inspired by our real world. So if you find something related to that, like Euros, that's probably why. <laughs> but two continents, they are really, really different. Every 12 years, this bridge that was built by the mages comes out of the ocean and connects both continents. It's a gigantic bridge, you know, like a gigantic bridge. So everyone is concerned because there has been a war in the past and they don't know what's going to happen next. This series is fucking great. I love it. If you love The Grace of Kings, I think that you are really going to love Mage's plot. It's really, really good. So highly recommend this one if you want some political intrigue. So this is The Traitor Baru Cormorant by Seth Dickinson. And man, this is also the definition of political intrigue, spinach whatever you want to call it. This book is really, really weird. Like, it's definitely not for everyone. I think that, for example, City of Lies, can, most people will like it. Uh, Mage Plot is a great fantasy novel. But this is really, really weird because it touches on aspects that really not other fantasies do. For example, we're basically being part of a conquest. So when Baru is sent to the new, the, the new place that has been just conquered, she is just going to try and take over economy, culture, and that whole aspect. It's just weird because they are just trying even to change the coin to just get more control over it. So it's not something that a fantasy novel would just take its time to talk, just like in other fantasies. But this one is like, it takes a lot of time to just talk about that type of shit. And I love it. I love it. Everything is explained. There are things that you don't really think that much about. They're just like, oh yeah, of course, we need to change that because they might rebel. If we just take that, they are going to just uh, get into the empire and that's going to be it. And it's just so weird. So weird. So in this one, we're going, basically going to follow Baru and she used to live in this peaceful land until one day the empire came in and slowly made their way into conquering them because the empire doesn't go there like with guns out no they start by introducing their coin they start building schools they send the kids to their schools the kids talk to their parents it's just so nicely done so nicely done like it's the history of a conqueror basically of a conquest conquer conquest it's amazing. I love this. This is definitely not a book for everyone. Baru is really unlikable and, you know, it, it, it touches on really weird themes. So it's not going to be for everyone. It's also very dry, but I loved it. I loved it. There's also a female, female romance here. It was really good. But overall, love this series. Highly recommend if you want some true political intrigue. So that's basically going to be all. Oh my God. 10 books. I have more, but I decided to just, you know, keep this with 10 and have books with really deep political intrigue roots and then ones that are more light, just to have a little bit for everyone. But yeah, if you have more books that are really heavy on the political intrigue trope, tell me, because I would love to know. I just love political intrigue so much. But that's going to be all for today. So as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.